So let's go ahead and, oh wait. I wanna make sure that the project is loading because I, I have a strange thing here, hold on. What do you mean that it couldn't be found? It says, oh, it's in this, so no worries there. I think that's gonna do it. We just have some little naming things. I just wanna make sure that I get all these out before we begin. Okay, let's rebuild it. Almost wanna put a timer on this thing. Say, we'll shoot for like two and a half hours. What do you guys think? Try to get that thing back going. I'm totally down with that actually. So two and a half hours is two hour, 120, 150 minutes. All right. Let me just go ahead and come on over here. Wait, where did all that go? Oh, well, that's fine. All right. Ready? Where did that text go? Just a second. I know I set this up at one time. Hold on. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. So our current time is there. We'll add 12.52. Cool. All right. Let me go ahead and add in the new project. Oh, did, did this load? It didn't load. We got two minute and a half to get this thing building. We'll rebuild it. I haven't done one of these in a while. All right, 30 seconds, and everything built. That's fine, don't worry about that one, and then we'll clean. That's not a real error. See, it's not a real error. <clears throat> Seventeen seconds. Ten seconds. All right, we're off. Let me go ahead and add in a new class here. I gotta stop it. I need to add in a new project, right? And it's going to be a class library, and we are going to call this my kingdom color. And we need to make sure that we put this into the appropriate place, which is Visual Studios Programming Modules over here in Games called uh, Kingdom Color. So this main class is called a game manager, right? Game manager, right? And then what else do you have in here? You're gonna have something called models, right? And you have something called a base phase, right? And then you're gonna have a couple of different phases in here. The first one, uh, if you recall, we have a uh, vote phase. And then we have a uh, phase 
but wager. Okay, we had a phase war. And then we also had a phase... Let's just start there. Okay, you know that inside of this, you're going to need to have a new folder called Anooms. And we're gonna have a new item in there and we're gonna call this Anooms. <clears throat> so in this, you also know that you need to have a new model type of a game. Okay, you also needed to have in your game manager, you have to have something in here which is a um, public. Well, don't you want to have something that's a factory, so to say? So you want to have like a. Let's make a new class in here called Game Factory. So let's make a new folder in here called Factories. We'll make a new class and we'll call it a base factory. And this is a uh, base factory. All right. Oops, that's stupid. You just wanted the constructor. So when you look at one game, the game is going to have a collection of phases on it and then also a current phase, right? Then probably you want to have something that's like a another reference over to say what is the current game. So wouldn't this be a stack? No, it'd be a queue. Because you'd be saving those phases for later. No, you'd want to keep them like that. Do you need this to be concurrent? Or uh, um, um, do, do you need this to be thread safe? Yes. So this is a concurrent bag. And then you need to have a public base face phase called phase current. Why is this unhappy with me? Whatever. You just should have public and just be done with that. Just a second. But this one isn't exposed, so no, it's not. It should be like this. Because this is an in-memory object, okay? Within my application, okay? You're also going to need to have some players in here, right? A player is going to have, what, a user ID? because that's who it is, and then also their platform, so that's coming actually from my other library here in Ali.chat. It is a user, user. Well, 
because that is stored in the database. Hold on. It's not. It can be passed. So you'll have a user here. View model. Like that. Oops. Right? Because this user has to have a a user ID, right? And then also probably a provider. Just a second. Because the user ID and the user is going to be dictated from its provider, so that should be like a user provider. Just a moment. Moment. Because this user should have a link to a provider, right? And this provider should have a bunch of these different users. Just another second. This user should have a user ID associated to them, right? Or they should have a link to... Well, they'll also have a username. Okay, so that's fine. So it's this. It's this. And then it's a um, provider which is a virtual, because we're okay with it for this small little application. Um, and this is going to be a, uh, provider, provider. And then here you need to have a, um, a good called a provider ID. Beautiful. Okay. So now you take these informations. We're going to bring them over to this user view model, which has this provider as a provider child view model. Okay. A provider looks like this. So a provider child looks like it doesn't have anything with the stream details. Hold on. Just the name and the code and the ID. That's all. Okay. So now we have our user. And we also need to make sure that this has a collection of my Twitch user. So that's just user. New list of user. Right? Hold on. Looks good. That'll just add in the appropriate. Okay. Fine. Good. Alright. So now we can come back down to the task at hand. And we're going to look at my game manager. And what we need to do is we need to, this game is going to have a, we need to have a list of users that are going to be players in it, right? So that's here. Here, username, a user ID, and a provider. Perfect. Okay, what other properties does this person need? Well, they're going to have a We need to look at my enums in here, right? 
I know that we're going to have a, a numerator of com of, uh, of, uh, of kingdoms, right? So we need to have a model here called a kingdom. Wow, I think that absolutely the uh, repeat on um, Twitch, I, I'm sorry, on YouTube doesn't work right, but that's fine. Because I keep getting the same songs over and over again, which is weird. Okay, so I don't really like using enumerators, right? but we're kind of in a, in a rush. So we can do the data access later, later, and we can just leave this here. So we're gonna have a red, green, blue, purple, and a um, yellow. Now, let me look at this thing. No, 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 don't touch that just so I don't have to redo everything in the world. Okay, and this is fine for right now, but we're gonna have to change this and load this into a database in a little bit, but for now we're okay with this. Actually, we could probably do this without having to redo it a second time by, let me think, um, in this, I could probably, in my game factory, perfect. We need to do something where we do like a public void. Create default game. And now it's going to be var game equals new game, right? Okay, phases, phase current, these are all things that we can add in here. But this is not my POCO model, right? This is actually a working model. So let me close this thing over here. So it's not like this. So like that. We have to get all of our base classes set up here. Perfect. Okay. So now if you wanted to create the basic game, you need to load these different phases in here. Okay, so we'll do a Q, just a regular Q, right? Just a regular Q, because you're only going to be doing one of these at one time when you're constructing it. And this is going to be of a base face. because now you're going to load this, right? Phases equals a new, and then you just do one of these, and I'm almost positive there's gonna be like a constructor to handle that. There is. When you look at base phase, we wanna look at index, right? So this is going to be a, um, was this a working prompt? No, it's not. So this is a index. So it's a protected index.
And now this one would be a uh, second. Wait. No, this is a Poco model. And this one is called a um, base phase index. Because you need to create these, and then you're going to load this. So a, a phase is a base. Oh, just a second. Just a second here. Just a second. When you look at this, your, your game is going to be loaded here. You're going to be creating that, you're going to be passing that, you're going to be unloading that into a few models and be loading it later. So all of these are just going to be created for work. So all of these phases are created for work. So that's just fine exactly the way it is. So when you look at base phase, it should just be like this. And then you should have a uh, public base phase. And then you should say like an integer called index, right? And then you probably also want to have that visible, right? So that's going to be an integer called my index. Okay. This needs to be inheriting from my base phase. This one too. Okay. So now in your factory, when you're creating this, your g default game is going to have four phases. Far phase one equals new, and it's called a phase, right? Um, you s you called it a voting phase. Uh, what, did, what, did, what did you originally have your phases set as? Phase vote, phase wait, phase idle. Just a second. So there's a waiting phase, and then there's an idle phase before you vote. So we're going to change that. Our first phase here is going to be phase announce. This is a public. When you look back here, I don't think you ever set this, right? What's your next phase? And actually, there's probably an easier way to do this, where you could just do is a far phases equals a new list of my phase, base phase, right? And then we could probably just do it like this. So the first one is going to be a phase announced. The second one is going to be a phase wager. The second one is going to be a phase vote. Well, isn't a wager and a vote the same thing? So what did you do before? When I look at the general, you said idle, vote, wait. 
in war. And idle was just when you were spinning your first message, right? Idle was when it was available, but nobody had ever started it. So you do need to have one here called phase idle. Perfect. And when that one's done, then you have phase announce, then you have phase wager, just a moment. That's a vote, there is no wager, that's a vote. Then there's a new phase in here called phase war. And then when you get to the very end of it, then you need to have a wait. So that's the very last one. Base phase. All right. Then you need to create the new game. And that's going to be this queue of phase. So you need to make a new queue and then load that, I'm assuming, right? Like that. And that should be ready to rock, right? The information to where this is coming from for these different games, this should probably be loaded from a database which means that I'm going to probably need like a data access layer in here. And we'll just do a fake one. So we'll add a new class and we're going to make this an interface, right? And this is going to be a It's going to be emulating a data access layer. So that means that it needs to be a I data access layer service or just some crap, right? And so now in this, we're going to have a, uh, it's a um, void. We want this to return this list of phases, but this order and list of them from the service, which comes from the database. So this would come from my moment. Because if I got it from, if I got the entire game from the server, then I wouldn't want to get that. I would only want to necessarily get the order if I wanted to change it on the website. Just another second. Which means that the game would be controlled 
at the web API side and then we would be controlled here coming out of the data access layer service. So yeah, that is where we want this. So we want this to be a, um, create game. Or we could just say, um, get game phases. And so this is going to be returning this list of base phases, right? Right? Hold on. And then you need to be passing in some parameters here, which is going to be called like game type parameters. So you want to create in your, you want to create a new folder in here called requests. And you're going to add one in here called game type request. Game phases request. And the only thing you're going to have in here is a uh, integer called a um, game type. Nah, just leave that alone for now. So now you'll be passing in this and getting your game phases request. Now it's totally scalable, right? Because over here you can just come into your data access layer and create a new class called data access layer service. We can just inherit this. Like that. And now all you're going to do is uh, switch here on your uh, request dot game phase request dot ugh. game type because if it is in fact a zero or a default which is whatever it's going to be then we want to do this interesting oh you have a return and a break What is wrong here? It doesn't like that I'm doing this. And then that. There we go, that's fine. So now here you can do a um, I data access layer service data access layer service okay
now this is now an asynchronous uh, task of this, right? Because you need to get your um, var get await my data access layer services dot get game phases of my new request type. my game type will be equal to zero. Because here now in your enumerators, you should be able to do something like a public enum game type. Default equals zero. When you look at this, this is saying that this needs to be a task. Like that. And then you're going to return this game here. And then we'll just put this summary here as this creates the default game. All right, we'll just say creates the default game. Returns game the default game object. Okay. Now we're going to extract this interface here. Come back over here to the factory and I need to add in my I base factory, right? Which is a public interface I base factory which is inheriting my base factory like that That's fine, okay? Mm, that looks fine too. So now when I'm looking back at the... Um, game phases request here looks good. I think the first thing that we wanna do now when we start this game is we wanna create that new first... Blah. Public game manager. And then we want to do a public. And I, we probably want to have something in here called a start. Start game. We want to have a game type here, right? That we're passing in. Now we don't care about that. So you need to have a protected here. I guess, yeah, that's fine. Um, and it's going to be my I game. No, because that object just gets passed around. So it's going to be a var game equals a, but your factory does not. I game factory.
This is a protected, right? But then you can load anything you want in there, which is great. I actually really like that. To do this. Okay. Actually, do I like that? Hold on. Well, you'll probably want to do one more layer of extraction on this, right? So you could just do something like this. So that way you can always overwrite them if you want. I did access layer service. So this way we can overload these if we want later from a different app. Just a second. If you set the game factory, then you're also going to have to set the new service, right? Couldn't you just do a new data access layer service there? Like that. Like that. Perfect. And then we can just create a game here. And we're just doing the default game. Now we need to get our phases here, right? Remember, this is a uh, asynchronous task here. So this is an await. And now when we look at game, that currently doesn't have anything exposed except for our... And so now what we want to do is we want to get the uh, phase is equal to my... Um, phases dot where s where am I interesting Where my index, well, we want to get the minimum of that. Bar min phase. It doesn't matter what phase it is when you're doing this new constructor, does it? I don't, I just don't want to, I don't want to get any bugs in here. So I could just do is this phases dot min s where my s dot index is equal to my min phase. Okay, now if my phase does not equal to null, 
this game probably needs to have a state, right? Well, no, this represents state, so it doesn't, so now it's stateless. So now, if it is not equal to null, then... Then it's time, I think, to start the game. So let me take a quick peek here. So then, in each one of my phases, we have something that starts it, and then ends it, and then it has a timer associated with it with an update. So I think that's going to be a lot of timers if we did it that way. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the base phase here, and I just want to create my... If I looked... I already have a bunch of this here, so let me grab this stuff. Protected, and and this is going to be um, seconds total, right? And then you're going to have a protected and seconds interval, and then you're going to have a protected and and then this is going to be a time elapsed seconds. Uh, we'll just say index seconds index. But you're going to say that not only that, but your seconds total here is going to be a seconds total. So we could say timer, no, that's fine, and seconds interval. I don't know why we would want interval at this point. So just that. But you need to have an update here, right? It's like a timer update. Public virtual timer update. Because this needs to have a timer associated with it. But it's being managed by that base manager, so that's fine. All of this is contained. And that's going to pass in an, an in, and that's going to be an interval in milliseconds. Total milliseconds. We'll say um, phase time milliseconds. Phase index milliseconds. So now for the first thing you're going to do is your uh, phase interval milliseconds plus equals to your interval milliseconds. So now if my we need to have another one here which is um, protected bool can time update equals true. a second.
if can time update. We'll just have it right there, right? So now if my phase index milliseconds is greater than or equal to my phase time milliseconds. Whoa. Then can update time equals false. And now you need to have an event here, right? Something that's going to say that this phase is completed. So in my kingdom color, we need to add a folder in here called events, make a new one called handler, event handlers. Oops, oops, we'll call this one args. Event handlers. And this is going to be a public delegate void phase event handler and that's going to be an object and then a phase event args b well, I don't know why I wrote this this is a sender So the first thing is here, you need a base args, which is an abstract, because this has two things in it. The first is a GUID called an ID, and the second one is a timestamp. Just my Rob conventions here. Come on, you need to add into Kingdom Color. You need to add in the uh, the Newton Soft. You forgot the other one. This is going to be my phase event args. Phase args, right? Wait. Event args is what this inherits from, right? Looks good. So we have a couple of different enumerators that we're going to pass around in here, right? We're going to say phase event args type. I don't think we need args. Okay, let's move this over to uh, well, what do we want to put in here first real quick? We have this event, which is going to be, say, start. We have one which is called complete. We'll say that this is timer complete. It's 
we probably should include in here a copy of the phase that it is, right? And then probably also the game, is that correct? Hold on, phase event args, which would be coming from the basic game. So that would be incorrect. This would just be coming from the game. So let's move this now into the enumerators here. Like that. Okay, phase event handler. So down here, When you look at your phase, and you're starting it here, this should return a bool, right? If can time update is false, then you're going to say that is true. And then also you want to have that event. So this was a uh, events aren't, they don't pass through inheritance. So we need to do a private phase event handler phase event. Down here, I need to have my public event phase event handler call this a phase event. And we need to add it. If So now here, just to clean, keep the code clean, what we can do is we could just do this. Um, you want to do something here called a public void fire event. Fire. Fire phase event. Phase event type. If my phase event does not equal to null, then you want to call it with this and then a new one of these things. Interesting. So it wants the game coming out of this thing, but it's not, it's actually the phase, which would be this. Just a second.
Mm-hmm. This is correct. So that means that over here in events, when you look under phase event args, this is actually a phase, right? Just like that. But there's also another one in here called a game event args. Base args, right? Public anum game event type. And you're going to have a um, phase start, phase end, because you're not going to do all of them, right? Like that. I guess it wouldn't hurt to just have your game loaded in here, right? But it's alright. Move that over to Anooms. Wait, game event type in a noom. Game event type right here. Strange. Okay. So if you look back here in event handlers, you got to make sure that you have the next one here as well, which is a game event handler. Like that. Okay, phase event type here is going to be phase event type. Like that. So now when you're up here, We'll fire the event right here. And now here, this is going to be a return true. And then this will be a return false. Okay, timer update. Interval. Then you'll have a fire phase event here, which is called my timer complete. So you probably should have something here called a protected bool stop phase. Just like that, right? Like that, and then we want to say return true here. Otherwise, we want to return false. So here, you could do it like this. Timer complete. Looks good, okay?
All right. They also have a... Aren't you going to need something which is like a message that's going out from these... Well, just a second here. Okay. So now when you're playing the game and you're here and you've created these... Okay, so let's go like this, and then we're gonna say a protected bool is running. So it's currently gonna be false. But now if you have a public start game, But you knew in your game manager you were getting your updates, right? Hold on. I don't think that you want to have this thing have anything that says start, right? Right now, all it is is that it's not running. Ugh. And now once you want this thing to start running, you want to call... Just another moment. This is fine. And so now at this point, then what you're gonna do is you're going to say if my phase, so we wanna do this as a bool, does not equal to null, and my phase is running Then what you want to do is Let's change this to be is time updateable. So when you start this phase, and then also if it is not running, and you want to say this is also true. If time is not updatable, and no, if it's not running. And then here you want to say your phase time no that's fine like that and then is your time updatable yes Looks good. Okay, that looks fine. Okay. So in this bool, you have something that says is running. Just a moment. And this phase isn't running. You're going to say is running is equal to true here, right?
and we're not currently running. And then we're going to go ahead and start this phase. Okay, so now in the game, manager, game type request, right? Didn't you have something in there like that? Game phases request. Right. That would mean that a good would be here, right? And that you'd have a new entity over here called a game type. So now this game has a type of game on it. Which has these type of phases on it. another second here. So now over here on game type, you should be able to add this, right? Like that, right? It needs to be a new one of these and then we have that default constructor in there for it. Okay? Phases, right? And then probably down here we also want to have our index on that, right? I don't care so much about that, but we do want to have those exposed. So we do want to have this uh, concurrent bag of my base phase called phases. Like that. So here. You need to pass in your game type, right?
But here, your min phase is going to be from your game type dot phases. Like that. Perfect. Then you're going to go ahead and start this phase and say that you're running. Beautiful. So here you're going to create this game, passing in that request, and then over at the factory, game phases request. Like that. Game type got changed to an enumerator now, so this is like enums dot kingdom color dot enums dot Just a second. Oh, you don't need to do this at all. Like that. Wonderful. So here, if you went back and looked here, you should be able to get game type. Game type request. Game type request. So that's back here. We need this to drop in here as a game type request. It's going to be an integer called my game type. I guess it should be a Good, right? I guess it'll be a string. And this should be a game type ID, right? That's fine. Two goods there. So here, this needs to be a game type, right? And you want to get it from this request. Let's go ahead and do this twice, and then we'll do this as a game type request.
like that, right? So you can make one from either a game type request, which is an ID, perfect. And you can also do this one from a phases request. So when you do that, then you have to make a new one of these, right? This wants a new queue of this, right? Of my base phase. And I can just use that default constructor right here, like that. Okay. And then here we could have one more, which is called private void set initial face. Right? Oops, I wanted to undo that and then just close those up. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now here, when you make this new game, you should be able just to do it with these new... Or an I collection of these things. So this is just faces. Like that. following creates a game without from a specified type creates a game without a specified type Okay. That's easy enough. So back here in the manager now, we're gonna start the game here. But you probably want to store this in And we're going to call that games, right? Hey there, Serializer. Welcome back. How are you doing today? Now, I wonder, do you have any events on this? Not yet. So, we need to go in the game and have a private event, game, event, handler, like that, and then we need to have a public event, game, event, handler, game, event, and it's an add, game, event, plus equal to the value, and then also below it. Game event handler. On game event.
And then somewhere you need to have when this thing is disposed. Public virtual void dispose, right? For each game in my games. We're just going to make sure that we get rid of everything. It looks like my game is not disposable. Oh, I can't do that there. But here I could do now my games.clear games dot dispose. Nope. Uh, games equals to null. I want to look in the game real quick here. Because I didn't have this as a I disposable, right? Even though I don't think there is anything that I need in here. But you do need to have a if is running, then you want to do a uh, is running equals false. I'm going to return it true. So if you stopped and it was successful, then you want to say that this stopped as well. So here, if it is running, then we're just going to go ahead and say that this one is a You, oh, oh, oh. Wait, what was the event type? It was phase event type. Stop manual. Like that. Stepping out for a second. Back. Alrighty, alrighty. Last one here. Let's go ahead and rebuild it. So I think we have most of our state machine set up now, right? Six errors. Let's fix those. Oh yeah, this is going to be a little bit different, right? No, that's fine. You just have to add the other one in here. 
So in the game phases request, you just want to have a game type ID, and currently we don't care what that is. To do game types are not currently implemented. Just fixing these little errors here. So what's the basic time that you want to start here? Mm. My phase time here will be how many milliseconds do you want? We'll do like 5,000 for each of these just for right now. Hey there, uh, Zachary98. Uh, question is, why do you not use SQL Server 2017 with Visual Studio 2017? I must have just not put the most updated version when I last did this computer. Okay. This says that this should be a task. Like that, right? And then here you can await like a task dot from result for a current object of a type null. Need to define properties explicitly. That's fine. All right. Game types are not currently implemented. That's fine. So all we're doing is getting it from there. Okay. Oh, we don't want to load this one. Okay, so I think we're good to go there. So you start the game, you add it, and then we have a game event here. Where we're gonna switch on my game event type here. Now when you start this game, you do need to also have an ID here which associates it to like a game room ID or something like that. Hold on one second. Let me think about that for just a second. No problem. First one, we should do this as protected virtual, right, for everything. But when you get this game, you do need to have a reference to who's calling it to start, right? So just a second. So if I'm over here and I'm logged on as a bot and then I say, go ahead and start this. This game manager is gonna hold a collection of games in it. This is stateless. Those are the games that it's managing. 
we're going to be receiving information in and out out of the bot. It's going to have updates here. And then we also need to have a Well, no, there is a timer in here. I'm fine with this one. But we can use this one. I mean, it's newer. But this is fine. So this is, now you have this timer equals a new timer, right? And the interval on that thing is like, I don't know, thousand. We need to create the new event for it on timer update. And then here you want to do um, timer.start. But up here, So this one is going to be an integer called your uh, timer update interval, milliseconds. So underneath here we'll do protected integer of my timer update interval milliseconds, right? Like that. And so now here on dispose, if my timer dot is not equal to null, then you want to do a timer dot stop, timer dot dispose, timer equals null. So here you're just going to do for each game, you want to do something which is called like an update timer. It's actually inside of that phase. second so this gate uh, this game needs to have a new public void update timer int interval Timer interval milliseconds. Phase dot update timer. Just like that. Just like that. Which means now that these timers, this is actually a concurrent bag, right? And that means we can do it like this. Like this. And then I think it's like a new callback or something like this of my target called on timer update.
this is probably different now. You could probably just do like a timer dot dispose. And then here, this is not a clear, this is a uh, just like that. And now we can rebuild. Just right there. Is that the last one? Beautiful. We are in great shape. Okay. So now I can call this start game, which is going to issue a request out and then create my game and then start it. It also is going to assign my game event. So if we have a game event, then these are the different actions that we can take. Beautiful. So now here, when we're doing a phase start, this is getting fired where? Well, actually, I don't think it matters outside of this game, right? So we'll just do a console.write line here. Oh no, because we're still doing a... Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and now we want to look at our phases. So here in model we look at phase. The first one that we had was phase where's my factory? Idle is the first phase. So here, in this, you definitely are going to need something that's called an update, right? So it's a public void update. We'll call this a message received. And I guess that this would be called a, well, anything that you're gonna be coming in has to be called like a base message, right? It doesn't matter where it's coming from, does it? So here, you do need to have something in here called a message. I thought you were working with something that was called Twitch message in here. Let me see where that is. There it is. It's in the business logic layer, you have something called Twitch message. So I think we could just use it with a base message and get by.
So do we need this? Because we could just draw in business logic layer because we need it anyways, right? We do need that, right? So it doesn't matter. Twitch message is fine to bring in. Base message is even better to bring in. So we can get rid of this. And then don't these things need to send a message back? So when you're creating this game manager, Don't you need to assign here an IBLL Alley Chat? Which means that this needs to get an. Just like that. And then when you look at this, the other one is a game phase and a game type request, right? Like that. Beautiful. So that means that here in the game, when you are creating this here, I B L L Alley Chat. Sad these in here. Don't you have something in here that's called a uh, pub protected void fire game event, right? So now if my game event here does not equal to null, then you want to fire it. Like that. Okay. Just so that we're ready in case we ever need to override this for any reason have a particular game particular any one of these different kinds of functions so here when we're doing our start it's starting the phase
So where are you assigning the phases here? You need to make sure that you're actually subscribing those events here. Here. Phase dot. Phase event. On phase event. And so now under my dispose, if my phase does not equal to null, then you have to do a phase dot phase event minus equal to on phase event. So now when you look at your phase event type, So here, this is check to see if end of phase right here, right? The current phase has just begun. So you're passing in these times every time, right? And then also, when this game gets a new message. So you have to have here. We'll just do this as a protected virtual again, right? fire game event here which is going to be saying that this is a game started game stopped Just like that. And then you're going to start that phase. This is definitely using game event, so I don't know what this thing's problem is. Like that. Okay, then we're going to update that phase. Now here on your game, you're also going to get a message from time to time. So that will be a public virtual void message received. And that's going to be a base message. Now, if my face does not equal to null, then what you want to do is your face dot message received of that type message, right? And then it's going to do a bunch of stuff with that message. Don't care about sending anything back about whether that message was received for a game event handler. Doesn't bother me. Don't care going to do a bunch of stuff.
Okay, that's fine. Started and stopped there for the game manager. This should be returning a game here, right? Like that. Okay. Because you actually don't need that either, okay? So now what you want to do is you want to get it on message received, right? So you have a public void message received, base message, and then also a game, probably. So now you want to do a games dot I think I don't have system link in here. So I want to look in there and I want to get the one where my game dot hash code is equal to this one, right? But it doesn't matter because you just dump that right on the game, right? Message received here. So you do need one that says uh, send message, right? Something that does that, right? Hold on. probably do that as an event, right? So here you go, start and stopped. Do you want to do it as a message event or just as a game event? But you have a reference to this VLL chat, so it doesn't matter because you're dumping that. So it doesn't matter because when you are That's it, so let's go take a look at what's happening inside of our individual phase. Like that, okay? So now when this phase completes, then what we wanna do is, I need to take a look at what's happening in the first phase, which is idle, if I recall, right? Idle.
So now right now we're in a phase idle. So we're just gonna say real quick here just for fun, system.console.writeline. A message has been received in the idle phase. Get ready with this stuff here. Go, Johnny, go, go. Gotta do this a couple more times here. A second. Whoops, too much. We want to leave it like that. Strange that I went farther than that, huh? All right. Almost done. Okay, let's see how that does. So now we can actually try to implement this real quick. So up here. So now we come up here and we look into implementing this inside of the actual service itself. Here is where I'm doing my events, right? So for now, let's just do a console.readline in here. Every 10 seconds, it's going to pull to try to hit that server. And then before that, now what we want to do is we want to create the let's give it a try. So that game factory, here's start a game. And we need to give in a, uh, a new request. And then also that, okay, so let's move this stuff. And let's do it where after you join a channel. Timer update interval will be every thousand seconds, why not? And now we need to start this, so it's task.run. Well, now you could do it like this. Right? So you didn't want to do a phases request, right? Oh yeah, you did, that's fine.
Where's the one that it was? So this is on a channel event here. I need to get the channel name, the ID. I want to get my sender. So this is coming from, what is this? It's coming from BLLL chat, so that's right. Like that, okay? Wait, no, you were fine the other way. That should start the game right there. So I just want to add up here in my game managers real quick. So it should be one game manager, right? this wants to also have the BLL chat that it's associated with and the channel. So that needs to be a BLL chat and a channel, right? Okay, this thing is a Twitch channel view model. So you have something here called a public channel view model. Yeah, and then you have another one in here called a IBLL alley chat. that channel here is going to be equal to that and you don't have one of those
and then here you're going to say your, and that's fine. So now if you look at Game Manager, when you have Start Game here, you don't have this. This. So when you look at game, you're also going to have this one, you're going to have a game type, and then you'll have the, so this is from the request, right? So the factory model means that it gives you an extra layer of abstraction. Just one second. Well, I think that those are two different things that you're working with now. Um, so you'll have to fix that. When you look at your game type request, see this in game phases request, these are different. This is a game phases request looks like this. No, that's okay. And that's okay. I'm totally cool with that. So then that means that it's also going to be a channel view model, right? Does it have a channel? Because that BLL all the chat is going to be in all of those different things and then inside that it's going to have a number of different yeah so just do it right now as a channel view model So that's done. This thing needs to also have on it those two other pieces that the other one did. This one. Like that. What? I 
All right, let's go ahead and build it and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, we need to, in order of, uh, we need to start with the identity server. Then the next one we need is the MVC. I guess I didn't need the MVC, did I? That's a mistake. It would be the web API. And then Ali Chat. I have no idea what's going to happen here. Here we go. Should connect me. Okay, it didn't like my get Twitch routed there. Let me try it again here. All right, it fits out on me. Let's figure out why. It's in the web API, so we should just be able to run just that and then try to get this here. This is an easy one to get, get Twitch routed. So we should be able to grab it just from the swagger. I can't do this one on stream, unfortunately, because it has a quick Twitch routed. There it is has sensitive information that I currently don't have auth. All right, so there it was. Let's try it again. It's this one. It doesn't like when I go from... Twitch routed to Twitch routed view model. Twitch routed, Twitch routed view model, hold on. Twitch routed child view model. I need that manager is what I need. Um, so let's try it again. Try it again here. So it should tell me explicitly which one it is that's failing, right? Error mapping types. Twitch routed view model, Twitch routed. 
from Twitch routed to Twitch routed view model. Okay. So let me just see what's happening. So Twitch routed to Twitch routed view model. which means that we want to do my Twitch routed c.create map Twitch routed channel Twitch and on the other side it's Routed channel Twitch, Twitch Twitch channel routed child. I got this one here. And then the other one is Twitch user goes to Twitch user child. Yeah. So I see this one being contained here, right? Let's just try to get rid of this for now. Let's try it. Got eight minutes to see if we got it here. Failed again, hold on. Try some stuff for fun here. Here's the first one. I'm taking some properties out just to see what happens. I just, I can use this ignore map thing, right? Twitch user to Twitch user child view model. I don't know where it is failing. Mm -mm. Twitch routed ID, channel name, username. Is it because it wants to fill the children and it can't? So it needs to have a reverse map on this, right? Like that, one and two. And that would also be the same then in the Twitch users here, reverse maps and reverse map again.
I wonder if that'll do it there. Hold on. I wonder if that'll do it. Let's see. Says this one it doesn't like. Oh, I don't see why it's failing or where. So Twitch routed, goes to a Twitch routed user, okay. OAuth tokens map correctly. Then we have a Twitch user that's going to a Twitch user child view model. So here, Twitch user, Twitch user child view model. So for anything that says username on the one side, it's going to say username on the other. That looks fine. The other one is a Twitch routed channel Twitch. Which needs to go to a Twitch channel routed child view model. Which cascades This one Twitch routed channel to Twitch routed channel view model. I have to fix this one, I think. It needs to go from ah. Bot connected as.
I wonder if you could do this again for the other one, right? I don't know. Let's try it again. See what happens here. Hey there, Piku Fighter. Yeah, I'm using Link right now. Struggling just a little bit here right at the end. Run out of time. Just to get the final little mapping done. Well, I think I could probably get around this by... So I'm inside of my data access services alley chat. So this is all different. I'm going to move this stuff in here real quick just so that we get the older legacy stuff. Just in this initialize. So I could say copy the old version. Oh, it's not, it's not over your head, it's just... Lovely. Alright, here's what I want. I wanted to come all the way up here and grab my... So Twitch routed here, view model. Twitch routed channel. Yeah, let's put these in here. And then these two here. Uh, create map, it's doing uh, auto mapper. So I have these view models and entities. So an entity is something that's in my database uh, that has a lot of different interactions and can kind of stand alone. And then from that, I have uh, views, some that can be intent driven, some that can be very, very specific. <coughs> some people call those data transfer objects. I call everything a view model. <coughs> so if I'm going from one type to another, it can get really tiring mapping properties. Um, because they're so similar, even though that I'm only exposing some properties that I want on view models that are probably there on entities. Um, and so that's what AutoMapper does, is that it automatically maps them on my behalf, and it will do its best job, but I have to specify sometimes, which is what this is. Now we can try it again. Probably work right here. <coughs> Pardon me. No, nope, it's still got a missing mapping type. Oh, you're so stupid, Rob. You're so stupid. You modified the database and you never updated it. Changes to database structure. Oh, I am uh, right-handed. I actually have the camera swapped. Might understand, at least shouldn't know the difference between our experience levels. What do you mean? All right, 
so we gotta go fix this. Let's get rid of this PHS database here. And then I should be able to delete all of these things and then just re-add a migration here. That's why I've never noticed. Oh yeah, but I've had the camera flop for a long time now. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's been a long time and not long enough people know that I flipped it. There we go. I barely understand what you were doing, so I noticed that you have some quite some years in the drama. Oh, no worries, man. This is this is just kind of... It's fun to jump between the data access layer side and then the actual functional layer. So that's why this project is... It's really fun today, actually. Okay. Try that again. Dup, dup, dup. Works perfect. Now we can finally do that test that I've been trying to run for some time. All right. Run the identity server and then the chat. Here we go. Great to hear it. at least you're having fun. It's just because we're all over. I'm front and back and also service side. Relatively quick amounts of time. Here we go. But if you have any questions, Pico, by all means, this is a great place to put them in. Let's see what we can do. It's hitting my web API right now. Or should be, right? So this should be running. It didn't get any. Oh, because I don't have any in there. So let me uh, go ahead. It's actually on a timer, so I can just leave this running, and now we can start the MVC. Because I cleared the database. I don't care. Try it again. You'll get it. Yes, yes sir it is. It's all C sharp. Okay, so this is inaccurate. We need to log out. And now we'll need to log in. It'll create an account for me. Then we need to create a new bot. It's going to auth in Alley Chat. It's actually there, don't worry about that. Oh, did it not work? Oh wait, did that just not work? Did it get all the way down to create the entity? Or did it fail there?
Oh, it's failing at the update, so let's just see. That'll be a, probably a pretty quick fix. Let me see, I can't look at this one on screen, just a second. All that's looking right. Okay, let's do a quick little check here and see what's happening here. I feel like this bot connected at has a new provider that we didn't have before. On the user? Yeah. So that means that this one Okay, so this, this definitely goes here, right? And now this is where you're connecting as your bot, and then you're saying if it's not there, then you want to add your provider here, right? Provider name. You already know what that is. This is coming in as a Twitch router create whatever. Don't worry about it. Let's try it again. That looks right. out of time though unfortunately today we'll have to hope that this one cranks through here we go here we go That looks right. Oh, that worked. That was all that was wrong. So now we can add my channels in here. Ah, uh, no, not today. Piku says, I did a test to get a Twitch bot working in Unity, but I'm sure if you move my bot there, or keep it working on the Windows form. Actually, you could consider being a beta on this one if you want. This project, it's designed so that you can see that I have multiple bots that can go in multiple channels here, and we could use that as a feed if you're interested. And then that way, all you have to manage is just a TCP stream coming in of parsed objects. So this one, we want to do liver dev trying, right? It'll check to make sure that it's there, and it is. So no problems. And now we can launch the... Web a the chat. Okay, so now it's telling me that I got an error somewhere. A 
Okay, so let me go back to my start here, because in my connection event is where I think it didn't like that. Let's try it again. Can I have the bot share files through there? What do you mean share files? Tell me more about what it is that you're looking to do. I just need to know a little bit more, I'm sorry, just to understand. Here we go. Stand, stand by me. Is it gonna work? There you go. So now the bot has joined and we know that it has, although it's not showing me any messages, but I could do like a test message here. We should probably see it on screen unless I've unhooked that up. But what I'm waiting for is, oh no, there it is. There you go. If I have two bots with fit different functions, one for like and one for a game of some sort, can I have a file that keeps track of a player's points or scores? Sure. So exactly, you'd have kind of like one service, let's say service, right? You'd have one service set up that would be managing your data access layer. So like if you'd be storing on a database or on a flat file or in like uh, memory, um, and then you could have this other data source, which would be sending serialized data to you in memory. And then you could decide what you want to do with it from there. So now I wanted to see if this thing ever started my kingdom color and game manager. We were supposed to start a game at some point, right? And then here in your game itself, you were supposed to fire an event for when you get a message received and when you did a timer complete. When you looked at your factory, your very first game factory that you created was a from your data access layer. It says that my idle phase is supposed to be, okay. And so back up here in Alley, were you running your timer? So you're never running your update timer for your... Wasn't that in your game manager? So I don't even see this thing firing, right? How's that? Try that. Sounds reasonable. Have to do more design stuff so I know which kind of bot I would like. Now I also want to bring in my identity and then the this thing. We should be good now. Good, now it's working. Oh, but we have an issue. If you're running it like this, you can only ever have this running once, right?
So I don't want to do it with this one. I want to do it with the other one. And the reason is I can do a uh, protected bool is timer events running. If is timer events running, well, hold on one second. Just take one more peek at this because that's okay. Let's let that run and just see what happens. I'm thinking about making a simple idle farming system, but need a proper theme for the channel. I need to make a proper theme for the channel. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Let me uh, jump on in this one. Oh, I don't have that running yet. Nope, but it's about to. That's what all this project is that you're looking at right here. And all of this is going to be universal, so that if you wanted to have a currency system in your channel, it'll count on your behalf. Or if you wanted to have one of these games, you could put your own theme on it, one of the ones that, that I'm pitching here. All right, it joined. It means that it should be ticking, and now the timer completed, and it, it's working. Negative. That old one was so screwy, but we'll make it up to all the people that were there on the on the old one. This is, We have a revamp coming, which is really nice. But you can see here that we are now getting... We are now seeing that at this phase event, we're getting our timer complete, which takes me back to the game. And now here we would want to go to the next phase, run this logic, and then if it's not, it'll kick to the next phase after that. Um, cool. So for me, guys, uh, I got to take a break. Um, I might be back this afternoon a little bit for a couple more hours, try to get some more on this done. Thanks for staying with me. In case you don't know me, I'm Rob. I'm streaming now on... Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, from 5 a.m. until about 8 a.m. Um, and then also on Saturday and Sunday as much as I can. So click the follow. Make sure you check us out at the YouTube. Uh, or at YouTube. That is uh, where we have um, uh, all all of the original videos, actually. The, the original the videos that make up this series are up there. Um, and we don't have a custom link yet, so please check that out. And also part of Andy Dev here on Twitch.tv. Uh, Piku Fighter is a good friend of mine, so check him out. He's doing a lot of great work as well. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys, if not before, then tomorrow morning. Have a good one.